you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony that you are about to give before this court today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Please take your seat at the witness. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. If you will be asked a series of questions, please wait for these questions to fully ask before you respond. If you only have one person talking at a time, please try to honor natural tendency for nonverbal answers, but just try to the shoulder, nod to the head as well as uh-huh's and uh-huh's, because those will translate into the record. If there's an objection, please stop talking until it's resolved. Please keep your voice up, and if you would, please state your name again and spell it. Stephen Ford, S-T-E-V-E-N-F-O-R-D. Um, Detroit police officer. And how long have you been a Detroit police officer? Thirty years. And um, what is your current role uh, with the Detroit Police Department? Um, I work homicide. And um, how long have you been um, working with homicide? Thirteen years. And um, within homicide, do you have a um, particular specialty? Yes, I'm a certified video technician. And um, what does that mean to be a certified video technician? It means I'm certified through. Um, the Law Enforcement Emergency Services Video Association, LEVA, um, and I um, extract all videos from media devices, from DVRs, um, any hard drive, or anything that contains video. And um, how long have you been in that um, specific uh, area of focus with video? 12 years. And um, as part of your role with um, the homicide unit, did you have some involvement into the uh, investigation of uh, Zion Foster's disappearance in January 2022? Yes. Um, I want to show you uh, briefly something that's been admitted already as Exhibit 21. And um, I'm just going to publish a uh, file uh, on Exhibit 21 ending in 441. Um, are you are you familiar with um, this particular video? Yes, this is the neighbor across the street from the suspect's house. Okay, and is that on Greenfield Road in Detroit? Yes. And at some point um, during the course of the investigation, did you um, did you go to that neighbor's house in an attempt to extract video? I did. And were you successful at that time um, in, in actually obtaining video directly from that person's video system? Her system was overwritten. Okay. And do you recall um, approximately when uh, you went to that location? I believe it was right after Detroit received the case, so I'm um, shortly after we got it. Okay, so would it have been January 18th, 19th time frame? Yeah. Somewhere in there? Yeah. Okay, and so by that point, the system is overwritten. Um, but did you have contact with the neighbor who, who lived at this location? I did. And um, did you sort of have an opportunity to, to view uh, any any videos that she that she had? She, she saved screenshots of her video. Okay, and so that's kind of what we're left with are these, these screen grabs, essentially. Yes. And um, obviously it's, it's kind of small on that screen. Um, is there a way to take a, a screenshot so that you can get like a, a larger image of just the video portion? From your cell phone or? Uh, from like your computer. Yes. Okay. And um, I'm holding what's been marked as uh, proposed exhibit uh, 92. Uh, may I approach your honor? Sure. Um, is uh, proposed exhibit 92 um, a series of screenshots taken from these videos? Yes. And um, would it be fair to say that those just represent sort of snapshots of specific moments in time um, otherwise captured on the, the video that's been admitted as Exhibit 21? Yes. And um, would you see, say that the, the images contained in Exhibit 92 are, um, are fair and accurate depictions of the, the video itself? Yes. 
And is it fair to say also that there's some portions where there's something circled or uh, highlighted? Yes. Okay. Um, I move to admit uh, proposed exhibit 92, Your Honor. Um, just normally I wouldn't object, but um, is Sergeant testifying that he prepared the particular screenshots or did he review this particular video and compare it with these screenshots to make sure that these screenshots were uh, contained in this particular video? So I'm not sure if there's a you problem. Want to ask him? Sure, can I? Sure. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Sergeant. Good afternoon. Now, you had an opportunity, did you have an opportunity to review all of this video footage contained in the exhibit um, that's presented on the screen? These exhibits or when I was at the scene? No. Did you have an opportunity to review the video footage for the footage from across the street that's being displayed on the screen behind you? So if I'm understanding you correctly. Okay. I, 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 I'll, I'll ask another way. You, you indicated that you went over to this address and correct. that there were screenshots of this particular video, correct? Yes. Had you had an opportunity to review all of that video? Yes. Okay. Um, had you had an opportunity to review those these screenshots prior to today that you're holding? Yes. Okay. And you're able to um, testify that those screenshots accurately match the video that was uh, extracted from the video camera from the house? Yes. Okay. No further questions. No objection. All right. Here? January the 4th, 22 at 111438. Okay. And yeah. uh, at this point, is the driveway uh, of the relevant house empty? Yes. And uh, moving to page two, um, what's the timestamp at this point? January the 4th, 22 at 111505. Okay. And at this point, is there a, there's a car in the, the yes. driveway now? And um, and there's a specific portion of the car that's that's highlighted in green there. Yes. And um, moving to uh, number three, um, is this at that that same time, eleven fifteen? Yes. Okay. And there's a portion highlighted at that point. Yes. And moving to number four, um, are we now at one forty one a.m. Yes. Okay. And moving to number five, are we now at 148 a.m.? Yes. And number six, are we now at 148 a.m. as well? Yes. And the difference between six and seven would just be the, the, the lighting, is that correct? Correct. And then moving to the next one, are we now at 149 a.m.? Yes. Next one we're at 2:15 a.m. <coughs> and the next one we're at 2:42 a.m. Yes. And the final one we're at 2:42 a.m. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And the difference between these two 2:42 a.m. would be the the lighting. And does there appear to be something going on with the car at that point? The trunk is open. Okay. Um, a as part of your investigation, um, did you come into uh, sort of possession about information of the potential location of Zion Foster's body being dumped? Yes. And did you, um, did you search for video um, of the um, possible dumping of her body? Yes. And um, was there a particular location where you were able to um, find um, relevant video footage? Yes. And um, was that location a um, uh, an apartment building located at one three two two zero Woodward? Yes, that's not an apartment building. It was uh, a um, a facility for um, not homeless, but like people in need. Okay. It, it was a facility, but it was a it was like a housing <coughs> facility. Yes. 
Correct. Okay. Um, and did you um, did you go to that location on January twentieth of twenty twenty two to to extract video? Yes. Um, and um, can you just kind of describe in general what type of um, camera system was at that location? Yeah. If I could refer to my report. Sure. Do you have a copy of your yes. report with you? Yes. And when you um, do video interactions, you generally document them in, in a report? Correct. And is that because you're kind of out on a daily basis extracting video and it's, yes. it's important to, to document these things to keep everything straight? Correct. And if you looked at your uh, report, would it refresh your recollection as to um, the, the sort of basic type of the video system at that location? Correct. Um, yeah, please take a look at your report and let me know when and if your recollection has been refreshed. Um, and so what type of system was at that location? It was an MVR, DVR. Okay, and were you able to um, download uh, video from that system from relevant times? Yes. And um, when you downloaded that video footage, um, were you able to make any sort of determination of whether the um, video's uh, system time was um, accurate compared with real time? Yes. And um, how is it that you, in general, go about making that determination of comparing the, the system time of the video system with, with real time? Mm -hmm. So I calibrate the time using the actual DVR, the monitor, I go to the monitor and pretty much compare my phone with, um, not my phone, with um, um, at a story piece. I don't know. So New York time compared to our time, which is um, basically uh, made it an hour and 27 seconds fast. Okay, and so um, you, you concluded that the, the system at, at this particular building, um, <coughs> 13320 Woodward, um, it, it was an hour and 27 seconds fast compared to real time, is that correct? Yes. Um, and I'm holding what has been marked as uh, People's Proposed Exhibit uh, 46. Um, is it your understanding that, that some of the video um, that you extracted um, from the Woodward location is contained um, on this disc? Yes. And we've reviewed that uh, together correctly before you testified? Yes. And would it be fair to say that that video that's on this disc is um, it's still in substantially the same condition it was in when you extracted it directly from the DVR system at that location? Yes. And that was back on January 20th of 2022? Yes. And um, viewable in this video, um, is there, um, I guess, is there something notable that's relevant to the investigation? Something notable to the investigation? Yeah. As far as um, what's in the view of the, the video footage that's that's on this disc? Um, the dumpsters behind the location. Okay. Um, with that, you're and I move to admit proposed exhibit 46. No. no. It's moved. And uh, may I publish? Yes. So, um, Sergeant Ford, so again, that time that's reflected on the video, how does that compare to uh, real time? It is 2.03. So when it says 3.03 a.m. on January 5th, we're really, we're really looking at 3.03. Uh, 2.03, right? 
203, yes. Okay, got it. And um, just to be clear, um, I want to go back to um, something that's been admitted as uh, Exhibit 19. And um, in particular, See the time reflected up here on page 12 of Exhibit 19. Yes. And that's uh, 2 a.m. to 2:07 a.m. Yes. And do you see the uh, the area depicted on this? Yes. And um, is, is this kind of right here where the yellow marker is? Is that going to be viewable in our video? Yes. Okay. And so we're looking when we're seeing 3:03. A.M. It's really, it's really 2:03 A.M. Just like in this particular image on Exhibit 19. Yes. Okay. Um, and I'm going to start at this 3:03 uh, and 27 seconds. of relevance to the investigation, would that be in this area where my cursor is? Yes. and 56 seconds and so that would conclude would that conclude the sort of relevant portion at that time yes 
And um, is it fair to say that lines up with this slide we, we see um, for Exhibit 19, uh, concluding with the 207 time frame? Yes. Um, I'm now going to publish on um, Exhibit 46 uh, another file um, ending uh, in uh, 0000. zero, zero, zero. Start at a timestamp of eight AM eight minutes and forty five seconds. And so um, again at this time, uh, right now on the screen it says oh eight hundred hours, eight minutes and forty seven seconds. Is that correct? Correct. Um, but in real time what, what, what time are we looking at? 7.08. And this is still on um, on which date? On the 5th. 5th of January 2022? Yes. Okay. And at this point it's a little lighter out, is that correct? Correct. And again, this area where the cursor is toward the top of the screen, that's kind of the dumpster of relevance? Correct. after the last video clip that we watched? Yeah. says 8, 11 a.m. Is it your understanding that dumpsters being lifted? Yes.
last relevant portion of, of this part of the video. Yeah. Um, I'm now going to publish from Exhibit 46 a file ending uh, <coughs> uh, 2000. Exhibit uh, 19, um, and specifically uh, page uh, 15. Um, would uh, would this time frame of uh, starting at basically 156 kind of correspond to this general time frame? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I'm going to resume playing the. Uh, Final video on Exhibit 46 at uh, 14:54 and 45 seconds. Sergeant Ford, throughout your work on this investigation, um, did you become familiar with something called a, a transfer station? Yes. And um, what is a what is a transfer station? The transfer station is so. For instance, when the dump truck picks up the trash, it picks up the trash from here and transfers transfers it to the garage down on Berry. And from theory, they transfer it to the actual um, final um, place of storage. Okay, and is that um, theory location um, of the 
transfer station a, uh, a place that you uh, sort of uh, physically acquainted yourself with, become familiar with? Yes. And um, I'm holding what's been marked as uh, Proposed Exhibit 87. Um, is, uh, is Proposed Exhibit 87 sort of an, uh, a map overview of the transfer system? Yes. Or transfer station, I'm sorry. And does that fairly and accurately depict the, the transfer station? Yes. Um, Your Honor, I move to admit uh, proposed exhibit 87. No objection. Thank you. May I publish? Yes. Okay, and looking at um, looking at this exhibit. <laughs> In terms of the area that's kind of blown up to the right, is that is that the transfer station? Yes. And um, can you explain um, throughout your investigation? Did you familiarize yourself with the process that happens when um, a garbage truck um, gets full? Um, wh where does it where does it go once it's full? It brings it to the transfer station. Okay. And what? Um, what happens at the transfer station based on your familiarity with the process? Um, the truck pulls in into the bays. And when you say the bays, um, can you sort of describe the, the bays that, the, that a garbage truck would pull into um, and kind of point it out on, on the image so here? Up to the top. Um, the top of the screen, the top portion of the building their bays, like a, a huge garage. Um, the trucks back to the garage, they're back in, and it actually dumps right on the floor. Okay. And do you see um, the sort of, uh, what looks like almost like a chain of, of objects? Um, what, what, is, what does that represent? So those are the semis that actually pull into the chute. There's a chute to the side of the of the, the garage, and it actually goes kind of like under, underneath the side, and when they dump the garbage onto the floor, there's tractors that push the garbage back onto the semis. And so, are those semis just kind of lined up, waiting, waiting in line to to take a take a load? Take a load, yes. Okay, and. Um, your Honor, may I approach the screen just to point something out? Sure. Really quick. So, just so I understand it, would would the would the garbage truck, the initial garbage truck, would it would it pull into this this structure? Yes. And then these are the semi trucks up here. Yes. And would they pull into the, this yes. structure from the side? Yes. And when they pull in, there's a there's a bulldozer that's essentially right, pushing pushing, onto pushing trash into them. Yes. And once a semi truck gets loaded with trash, um, what happens to the the trash from there, based on your understanding of the process? The semi takes it to whatever yard is is um, the final. So I think there's several actual um, dump yards, um, and I can't speak to where those yards are. But so whatever time of day, they all have specific times of um, which semi is going, say north and which is going south. And, and um, as part of your investigation, um, did did you um, did you obtain some video from this transfer station that's depicted um, in Exhibit Eighty Seven? Yes. And um, did you, um, what was the purpose of obtaining that, that video? Attempting to identify the truck that made the Woodward location here at this location so we can find out the timing to determine where that dump went. Okay, so you want to find out when the, the, the garbage truck that dumps the dumps that, that empties out the dumpster when it gets to this transfer station, Correct. right? And then do you also want to find the, the likely semi truck that, that then would have um, uh, 
have taken on that particular load? Yeah. Okay. And then from there, um, you would want to try to identify the sort of final landing spot of that semi truck. Objection. These are leading questions, right? You can ask them what his purpose was, but they're leading. I'll, okay. I'll try to rephrase. It, All right. It, just please. I, I guess, can you. Um, well, I guess we'll, we'll get to the process in a minute. But um, at any rate, um, did you familiarize yourself with the uh, with whether there was a, a video system located at the transfer station? Yes. And um, were you able to obtain video um, from that system? Yes. And um, in terms of that video, did you um, did you collect some raw video? Yes. Did you also make some modifications to to sort of like clip and trim that video for presentation? Yeah. And um, in terms of both the the raw video that you collected and the the more presentable version of the video, is it your understanding that those um, files are on this disc that I'm holding that's been marked as a proposed exhibit 47? Yeah. And um, would it? be fair to say that in terms of the, the raw footage reflected on this disc, that that's in substantially the same condition it was when you collected it at the transfer station? Yeah. Okay. Um, and when you um, collected that video, um, were you able to make a determination um, as to the accuracy of the, um, the system time compared to real time um, when it comes to the transfer station video? Yeah. And um, I'm assuming you didn't come with that memorized, is that correct? Correct. Um, if you um, took a look at your report, would that refresh, refresh your recollection as to the accuracy um, between the transfer station's uh, uh, system time and actual time? Yes. Um, why don't you take a look at your report and let me know when and if your recollection is refreshed. What was the difference, if any, between the transfer station video's system time and actual time? It's 42 minutes and 32 seconds faster. Okay. Faster than actual time? Yes. Okay. Um, with that, Your Honor, I move to admit uh, proposed exhibit 47. No objection. Okay. So do it. Thank you. May I publish? Yes. Sergeant Ford, what area of the transfer station is depicted in this um, in this first clip? This is actually the way station. Okay, and where is that relative to the transfer station? It's right at the beginning. Okay. So it, um, So you will come off ferry right into to the way station. Okay. And um, I'm going to move to um, three minutes and twenty seconds into the video. Okay, and um, this particular image, uh, stopping at 3 minutes and 35 seconds into the video, um, is there any significance to this? Can't see it, but I think this is the going off of the truck number on what would compare to this truck number to the same truck. Okay. Is he saying it is or is he speculating? I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm sorry. It. It's hard to see on this. Well, I, I guess we'll, we'll get to that in the slides later, but um, at any rate, you see a truck coming in to the way station at this yeah. point. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, I'm going 
going to move to a different file on um, Exhibit 47, and it is a file that uh, starts with the letters XVR, CH1, main 2, and it ends um, in the number 100,000. Just um, looking at this uh, image right at the start of the video, um, this area toward the top of the screen, where is that? Where so that's right the here? base where they, they dump the garbage. Okay. And um, if I just pull up for reference really quick, um, going back to uh, Exhibit 87, um, would that be would that be this area on Exhibit 87? Yes, the top shaded area. Okay. Um, I, I'm sorry. Could you go back to that? Because I was, I was kind of confused. On did, did he indicate the top shaded area? Yes. On do you, you see the shade at the top of the building? Is it where my cursor is right yes. now? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank, oh, thank you. Oh, and so is the good. is the camera kind of somewhere over here yes. facing this area? Yes. Um, and I'm going to skip ahead to um, the timestamp of uh, 9.50 and uh, 5 seconds. Um, in terms of um, relevance to the investigation, is there any relevance that you found to this portion of the video that we're watching right now? Just the purpose of um, the timing of the dump compared to the timing of the, the truck that goes into the chute.
Sergeant, what's the, um, I guess, the purpose of this part of the video? Attempting to show the trucks cleaning the area in the back. What's um, what is contained in proposed exhibit 88? This is the Woolworth location, facing the dumpsters, um, when the garbage trucks pulls in, um, trying to identify the numbers on the the trucks. Okay, and are there is there more than one uh, picture in exhibit 88? Yes. And this is the truck from Woodward <coughs> going to the way station. And so would, would these um, images in 88 be um, still images from some of the videos that we, we just went over? Yes. And um, do those still images contain um, sort of like times based on the, the time conversions that you um, discussed earlier? Yes. And um, are these still images from sort of like pertinent parts of the video that assisted you in um, identifying um, specific vehicles yes. in this investigation? Yes. Um, and are these specific times um, and vehicles that were identified, um, are they... Um, were they sort of um, relevant to the um, the ultimate landfill investigation done in this case? Yes. Uh, Your Honor, I move to admit proposes at 88. No, thank you. May I publish? Yes. circle up to the left next to the time stamp. Wh where is this location though? Oh, behind Woodward. The okay. facility in Woodward. And um, what's the, uh, the sort of, what would be the actual time um, at this point in time based on the, the time conversion? 7.08. Okay. Um, and um, so the 7-Eleven in there is, is not accurate? Maybe a mistake. Um, for the time up here in the conversion, it would be 7 or 8. Okay, got it. Um, and um, were you able to identify a um, specific uh, number to um, the, the garbage truck depicted in this video? Yes. And um, it, is it your understanding that garbage trucks can have the same number or those like unique identifiers? Just identifier. Okay. Um, and then um, if we go to the next slide, um, two. Um, are we uh, are we at the way station now? Yes. And I know that the numbers aren't necessarily viewable in, in the, the still images, but based on your review, um, di is, is this the, the sort of time that you were able to find the, the matching truck number yes. under the way station? Yes. Okay. And then, um, 
And then um, moving to slide three, um, what is what's the significance of what's circled in, in this slide? So the semi up to the right inside the circle, if you see the right the red truck, you see a white semi right in front of it. Uh -huh. And that's the truck that was in the bay when our um, our dumb truck truck went in. Okay. And if we go to the, the next slide, what's the significance of what's circled here? That's our dump truck pulling into the bay. Okay. And then um, the next slide, um, again, what would be the uh, significance here? Just showing it dump in the bay. Okay. And is the idea that uh, could there be more than one uh, semi truck in the bay at this time, or or just one? Um, it's it's two, but it's only one loading. Okay. The other one is ready to. Exit. It's like waiting, waiting yeah. in line. Yes. Okay. And then um, moving to the next slide, what's the significance of what's circled here? It's our truck leaving. Okay. And then um, the. Seventh slide, what's the significance of this slide? Our truck exiting the yard. So this is just following yes. further down the line? Yes. And um, in terms of the next slide, um, the final slide, what's the significance of, um, of this slide? Identifying the semi that picked up the load. And what would be, um, how were you able to identify um, the semi truck here? Truthfully, watching several hours to determine which one was which, but in the timing. Um, but this was the sem semi that identified going into the yard and leaving the yard after the dump. Okay. And so, what um, I guess based on your uh, the investigation, did, did you did you reach any conclusions with regard to the, the potential relevance of this semi truck? Yes. From the number from this semi truck, we were able to talk to waste management and find out where this truck went, where it took this load. And that would be to, to a landfill? Yes. Okay. And you use the sort of unique identifier on that truck that is sort of visible in this picture, but not entirely visible? Yes. Okay. Um, Sergeant Ford, are you um, familiar with a place called the uh, Detroit Detention Center? Yes. And um, what is the Detroit Detention Center? So all the precincts closed several years ago. Now we take all our pr prisoners to the detention center over on Mound, um, which is the old MDOC jail. But now it houses just our prisoners. Um, and so if somebody is um, held in custody um, before charges are filed, where, where might they be held? At the detention center. Okay. And um, at the Detroit Detention Center, um, do you have familiarity with whether um, individuals housed there have the ability to make uh, phone calls to the outside? They do, yes. And do you have familiarity with whether those phone calls are uh, recorded or not? They are. And um, is there a particular system um, that is used um, at the Detroit Detention Center to um, to store recordings of inmate calls. Yes, GTO. And um, as part of your role um, in the homicide unit, um, do you have access to that system? I do. And are you able to go into that system and pull um, call recordings? Yes. And were you asked to pull some recordings um, when uh, Jalen Brazier was housed at the Detroit Detention Center? Yes. And um, when you go into the system to look for recordings, um, can you go in and find recordings for a specific inmate, or is there some other way that you search the system? So we have two systems. We have one system that tells us when the suspect was arrested, and then we have the GTO system that just lists all the calls. So you basically find out what time the, the suspect made the location, and you just start listening from the time he entered 
to the time of the exodus. Okay, and um, did you find some um, re potentially relevant calls um, uh, from Mr. Brazier's time in custody at the Detroit Detention Center? I did. And um, did you extract those calls, those recordings of those calls from the GTL system? Yes. And um, I am holding what's been marked as a proposed Exhibit 48. Um, is it your understanding that one of those calls, um, a recording of the calls, is, is contained on this particular exhibit? Yes. And um, does this exhibit also contain a, a data sheet that indicates the, the date and time of the call and the number called? Yes. And is that information that you can also pull from the system? Yes. Um, and um, if you were to go back into the system today and pull this same call, would it be in substantially the same condition it's in now on this particular no. Explain that. We have one year. One year, okay. Yeah. But um, let me ask, let me rephrase then. If, um, to your knowledge, the, the recording that's on this disc, is this in substantially the same condition it was when you initially extracted it from the system? Yeah. And when you extract it from the system, part of that is to uh, preserve potential evidence, is that correct? Correct. So because the recording system has a retention period? Yes. Yeah. Uh, with that, I move to admit proposed exhibit 48, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, I would object. Um, if I could just board here. Sure. Uh, so yeah. All right, thank you. Good afternoon again, Mr. Uh, I'm Sergeant Ford, I'm sorry. Good afternoon. Um, now, you stated that these particular calls are managed by GTL? Yeah. Okay. Would, would that be the same company as Tailmate? I don't think so. I, I'm not sure. Yeah. I know our company is GTL. Okay. Company. Um, so this is a third party uh, organization who maintains these uh, phone calls, correct? Yes. Okay. And these particular calls, they're not stored on site at the Detroit Detention Center, correct? Um, no. Okay. And you don't know exactly where these particular f phone calls are stored, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, you don't know how these particular phone calls are indexed by GTL, correct? They're... You don't know how these particular phone calls are indexed when they're stored by GTL, correct? Probably losing me here. Okay. You don't know how these particular phone calls are labeled at GTL facilities, correct? So you're talking if I pull the calls, how they're labeled, or okay. before I pull the calls? Before the, 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 the calls, they're, they're stored on some type of mainframe, correct? Correct. Okay. That mainframe is not at the Detroit Detention Center, correct? Correct. Okay. Judge, I, I'm going to object to this. Um, it's not time for cross-examination yet. I, I, the foundation has been laid um, for the admissibility of this call. There's another witness who's familiar with the defendant's voice, who identified the defendant's voice um, on this disc. That's frankly all that's needed. If he wants to cross-examine on this, he can cross-examine on it later, but I, I don't think this goes to the admissibility of the evidence. I, I believe so. Uh, pursuant to MRE 803-6, uh, I, I'm assuming that the prosecutor is indicating that this is the custodial of records of this particular phone call, and I would suspect, based upon the testimony that's been elicited so far, that in fact that Sergeant Ford, in fact, is not the custodian of records of these particular calls. So he was not in a position to testify to the authenticity of the calls um, in this particular situation. Uh, it, it's, first of all, this is a, it's coming in as a part of the mission under the exception to hearsay. The, when we look at Rule 901, which is the rule for authenticating or identifying evidence um, under, under 901B5, it indicates opinion about a voice, an opinion identifying a person's voice, whether heard firsthand or through mechanical or electronic transmission or recording, based on hearing the voice at any time under circumstances that connect it with the alleged speaker. It indicates that that is a, a way of satisfying the requirement for authenticity. And so here, I asked Sergeant Jones when she was testifying very specifically about four specific discs and whether she reviewed recordings on those discs and whether she was familiar with a voice on those discs. And she indicated that for each disc, she was familiar with the defendant's voice on those discs based on her prior interrogation of him. What's more, he, 
he fully authenticated that there is a, a what's essentially a database that he can go into to extract recordings, and that's what he did. Um, so I, I just I don't think if he wants to argue this goes to wait, and there's another inmate talking about this case who's not Jalen Brazier, he's free to do so. But this doesn't go to admissibility. And Your Honor, I, I would say that you know if this is obviously trying uh, attempting to be entered under the hearsay exception of the records of regularly conducted activity, which states a memorandum, report, record, or data compilation in any form of acts, transactions, occurrences, events, conditions, opinions, or diagnosis made at or near the time by or from information transmitted by a person with knowledge if kept in the course of a regularly conducted business activity and if it was the regular practice of that business activity to make the mem memorandum, report, record, or data compilation, all that's shown by the testimony of the custodian or other qualified witness or by certification that compiles with a rule promulgated by the Supreme Court or a statute permitting certification. And Your Honor, I, I don't believe that we have this in this particular case. Sergeant Ford is in the position that he's being attempted to uh, verify these records under the hearsay exception as being a custodian of these particular I don't records. think it's hearsay. Yeah, it's a part of the admission. Yeah, it's, this isn't, we're not in hearsay exception territory mm -hmm. under 803 because it's a party admission. Even if we were under 803.6, it's not limited to custodians of record in the, the plain language of the rule. It's custodians of record or other qualified witnesses. So even if we were there, we're still, I mean, the, the, we got belts and suspenders here for the admissibility of this. All right, all right. And um, Your Honor, may I publish it? Yes. This is um, exhibit number uh, 48, Your Honor. Okay, and um, Sergeant Ford, um, you see this file um, on Exhibit 48 that's ending in 441. You see that? Yes. Okay, and if we if we go into the uh, the call list, um, is is this call list contain data um, from the the files that you were able to pull from GTL? Yeah. And so for this file ending 441, um, what would be the, uh, the date of that particular file? January 20th, 22, at 1021. Okay, so the, the 22, 21, that'd be military time for 1021 p.m.? Yes. Okay. One, by no, please enter the area code and phone number you are calling now. Please state your name at the beat. Please hold. Please wait while your call is being connected.
But you just be honest and tell them. Gary promised you if you tell them what he wanted you to say, then you guarantee to be home to your family. Mm -hmm. Just tell them what I'm telling you, and then you will make it home. So you okay. got to tell them that he made promises to you and shit, not everything you're putting in the fan, and you ain't do this shit. Okay. And then he's trying to spread rumors talking about they got cameras and stuff on the back of your house and somebody else's house showing that uh, you were bringing something. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what he's spreading people to. He's talking about they got video footage. Um, today the police went and found a video from the house behind your They saw you bring something out the house. Mm -hmm. and so that's what the, the rumor spreading around now for years. If you could possibly listen to this in camera, 
I'm not sure if the jury can hear this. I know in other cases I'm able to hear a conversation from the jury room, and this is pretty loud. And, and I'm a I'll turn it through. I mean, I saw so many people that know of him, and he's just running his mouth about stuff that's not true. Thank you. 
them when I'm telling you to leave you and make it home. So you got to tell them when he made promises to you and he did not. Everything you put in the van and you didn't do it. And then he's trying to spread a rumor talking about they got cameras and stuff on the back of your house or somebody else's house <coughs> showing that uh, you was really trying to make the so that's, that's what he spread the people too, talking about they got video footage. Um, today the police when he caught a video from the house behind your house saying they was they um they started doing something out the house. And they could so that's what the the rumor spreading around. And sorry, before we speak clear that issue you heard about the video, do you understand that to be not true? Yes. He's running around telling me, like, I mean, got so many people that know of him, and he's just running his mouth about stuff that's not true. Okay. Um, well, um, did you uh, get in contact with my mom or something that, you know, said he for down here? Yeah, so, we have. They can't bring me to him, can't get any points tomorrow or anything? No, we don't have to have shit to say, and tell them that. When, when, when they bring him to you and try to just tell him he is fired and you don't no longer need his services, tell them that you need um, to request one attorney. And you don't got to say shit to nobody else. Because if you don't want to say shit to nobody else, you don't have to say shit to nobody else. So that shit not going to be stand on work because he's sitting there promising that if you just say what I'm telling you to say, you're going to make it home. That's basically what he said to me about what I'm telling you to say. Basically what I'm
this camera footage on um, that was sent to you? No. You went over here and downloaded it? No. Okay. How did you did you ever come and receive it? I, I just viewed it when I made the location. You viewed it on the, the homeowner's system? On her phone. Um, and you stated that on the actual system, the video was overwritten? Yes. Okay. Do you know what the retention time is for that particular system for video? When I went to that location, it had already been overwritten, so I, I can't tell you how long. Did you ever try to ascertain how long this particular system maintained video? No, I did not. Is there a reason why you didn't try to ascertain how long? It was, it was already overwritten. There's no need. There's no need. And you didn't do any type of, I guess, compare, comparison between this particular video to see if there was an offset of the time, correct? I did. Okay. I looked at her cameras, and I saw her cameras were on time. They were on time? Yes. Okay. You didn't document that in your report, did you? No. Okay. So they were on time to the very second? Yes. And normally, would you indicate that particular step? For if, if I extract it, you go, yes. Okay. Even if you compare the video, do you normally uh, reduce that to writing as to that the fact that you actually compared the times and they were on time or simple? When I was at that location, I was not comparing. I was just doing what she had on her phone. Okay, so how would you determine whether or not this particular video on the phone <coughs> is from the correct date and or time? So the video on her time was time stamped and it had the correct date and time. Okay, but you said you didn't do, did you or did you do, I'm confused, did you or did you, do, or did you not do any comparison between her system time and the actual time that so when I went to extract the video, the video was overwritten. But of course, when I go to extract the video, I calibrate the time. And when I calibrate the time, the system was on time. Okay. And do you normally reduce that to writing, the fact that you did that particular step? No, unless I actually extract the video. And as far as the traffic station, you indicated that you don't know where the trucks go after they leave the traffic station? No, I don't. This particular semi-truck that you suspected carried the particular load that was uh, dumped by this garbage truck, uh, do you know where that truck went? I do not, no. In your notes, is there a particular semi-truck identification number that you have that you know that was the correct truck? No, I do not. So how do you know you were looking at the right truck? I provided the information that I gathered from the way station and from the um, from there and that information was turned over to Sergeant Jones. Sergeant Jones was able to take the numbers from those trucks to determine where those trucks are. And were you with Sergeant Jones when that determination was made? No. Now, you looked at a, a video, um, I believe it was Exhibit 47, where it showed uh, a garbage truck that was entering the tractor station. Remember that? Yeah. Okay. And it had a time up here, correct? Correct. Okay. And after watching Exhibit 47, you were unable to determine whether or not this was the particular truck that picked up the dumpster off of Wolf, correct? One more time. When, when you, on, during direct examination, the prosecutor showed you Exhibit 47. Exhibit 47 was a video footage of a particular truck entering the transfer station, correct? Correct. And during that questioning, you were unable to verify whether or not this particular truck 
was in fact this truck that picked up the dumpster that was located off of Wilbur mm -hmm. Island Park, correct? From this video? Yes, from the video, yes. Yes, I couldn't see. And you extracted this particular video, correct? Yes. And you indicated that you watched hours and hours of video, correct? Correct. And you look, were looking at the times of the video. You were looking at the times of the video, correct? Yes. And you indicated that you calibrated or I guess made a comparison of the actual time and then the time of the particular camera, correct? Correct. And you said you determined it was approximately 42 minute difference, correct? Correct. In order to make that determination, you had to watch the video, correct? Correct. So why is it that when you saw this particular exhibit 47, you were unable to identify this particular truck from a video you extracted? Because I've done it at my office where I, I can slow it down, zoom in, and I can see the see the uh, truck number. Okay. I, I can't see the truck number from here. Okay, but you were able to see the time stamp on the video, correct? correct? I'm not going to sit here and say that's the truck when I can't see it. So <clears throat> You were able to see the time of the video, correct? Correct. And did you write any notes down of when this suspected truck that picked the dumpster up from Highland Park actually entered the transfer system? Yes. So based upon your notes and your knowledge of the video, you were still unable to watch this particular video, which had a time that was indicated in being able to verify that this was the right truck, correct? Correct. And you were also unable to tell from the still photo that if this was the particular truck that entered the transfer station, which dumped the garbage can from Highland Park, correct? One more time. You were unable to view the steel photo that the prosecutor showed you and verify that this particular truck on the steel photo was in fact the truck that dumped the dumpster in Highland Park. Is that correct? Correct. Did you reduce in writing on, or your notes, the actual truck number that you believe to have picked up the dumpster from Highland Park? Yes. And were you able to match that with the truck or a truck that entered the transfer system? Yes. Now, as far as these phone calls from the Detroit Detention Center, do you, do you, after you're requested to extract these phone calls, do you listen to the phone calls or do you just extract them? I listen. You listen to them? Yes. What? Yes. In this particular situation, do you listen to them? You have to. Are, do you provide or do you generate the list of call, the call list that was shown to you. Um, do you generate that? Yes. Okay, so you actually type it? No. Okay, how is that particular list generated? It comes with the calls. From GTO? Yes. Okay. Is there any way that you independently verify whether or not the call that GTL sends you is in fact the call that you requested? So, I go in, so say if the person gets locked up at 1 o'clock, mm -hmm. 